All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Let's get right into it. So, look what's coming. The AMD Ryzen CPU. And the big question is, will I upgrade my system to a Ryzen CPU? And the answer is no. Sort of. Sorry. I know. I know you hate that, but I'm going to qualify my answer and explain it. Um, first of all, what am I working with right now? Well, right now, my system is an AM3 motherboard with a AMD uh, Phenom 2 X6 processor, a 6-core processor, clocked at 2.8 whopping gigahertz, and it is a 1055T model, and I've actually overclocked it ever so slightly uh, using the motherboard that I'm using to 3.08 gigahertz which is perfectly fine to be honest um i've been using the system quite a lot i've installed linux back on it i use it for video rendering and uh, it's connected to my tv so i use it to consume video content to watch youtube um, i work on it i have a portable keyboard and mouse and there is absolutely no lag whatsoever uh, using Fedora 25. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and an SSD for the main drive for Linux. So given that Ryzen has a 40% overall increase compared to their previous CPUs like the FX series, which I never got into, um, would I go out and buy a Ryzen processor and motherboard today if I could or even in the next month or two? And really the answer for me is no, I just don't see it in the cards in the future. The increase in um, processing time would have to be pretty significant and the price factor would have to be pretty low. Now according to Digital Trends here, uh, if we take a look, they are saying that the price, well actually it wasn't in this article, my apologies, it was in a different article I was reading that um, the top of the line Zen processor that's gonna come out is gonna uh, break at about $800, which beats the $1,100 price of the top level i7 processor. And keeping in mind that nobody has been able to do any benchmarks that are independent of what AMD has done, uh, word on the street is we've got an even match for um, the Core i7-6900K right now and Handbrake even beat it out in a test of, uh, with about five seconds to spare. So theoretically you should be able to get a top of the line Ryzen processor um, for what looks to be about a 20% cut in comparison to the um, i7 processors. As always, you know, we see those prices begin to drop as a little bit of time goes by and as testing goes on the Ryzen processor and we get some independent reviews and independent testing. So what have we got, though, with the Zen? Well, it, with a 40% work per cycle increase and yet the energy per cycle has dropped. And again, we don't know what the... Uh, total efficiency really is or what uh, wattage the system's going to use necessarily. So um, I do know the FX9000 uh, series processors were extreme power hogs and they ran extremely hot, which has always been the case with AMD processors. But they did pretty good with the Phenom series and with the FX6300 and 8300. So it was reasonable. Um, but looking at the you know when you look at the phenom series and the fx 6300 and 8300 series even now i can't justify it you know um even though the pricing is so low because there really wasn't enough of a performance improvement over the phenom processor that i'm running and i paid 90 bucks for the amd phenom 2x6 processor my six core 2.8 so that was a really good price, and I already had an AM3 motherboard with a dual core in it, so I just plopped the new processor in it. The really big downside, if you watched my video uh, where I talked about trying to get my NVIDIA card working in my motherboard, 
apparently my motherboard has received a surge and it zapped the uh, PCIe slot which is super disappointing so I'm looking around for an older AM3 motherboard and I think if I took that motherboard and my DDR3 RAM which is overclocked anyone anyway at 2100 megahertz um, the processor the uh, video card put all that together with a new board I think that would last me quite a while. You know, what I'm doing just doesn't demand the best processor and the latest stuff. If you're a gamer or you're doing some super intensive, um, processor intensive work, I could definitely see needing the better processor. But for right now, I probably will not. But I could see this in my future in a year or so. And I am pretty excited about it. And sometimes for me, you know, I get really excited and I just can't, I just can't wait. So I end up buying one anyway. But I can tell you right now, I would not buy the $800 processor. That's way, way, way over my uh, budget. But would I love to have one? Absolutely. What's your take on Ryzen and the Zen processor? Is it something you're interested in or are you a hardcore Intel processor user? Let me know, leave a comment. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next Fast Gadgets.